fellow readers and especially my fellow manga fans. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a very special video where I show you my manga collection. Um, it feels a little weird calling it my manga collection, but I guess that is the best description of it. Um, so just to get a couple of points out of the way. Um, one, I have been purchasing and reading manga for over 20 years, uh, really since it started to get published here in the States. I love manga. I love the stories and the impact that it's had on my life and who I am as a person. There are some great manga stories and they have really gotten through to me uh, and reached me at points where I needed them. You will see that a lot of my collection is based on uh, the stories themselves, whether that be the the overall plot or the characters, a combination of the two, and even the artwork of the artist. It had to have something that impacted and affected me and that I truly adore in order to keep it. Um, I'll say right off the bat that I have read way more than I have in my collection. There's been several series that I have read and then donated to the library because I didn't see the point in keeping them. They might have been stories that I enjoyed. They're good stories overall and I would totally recommend other people to read, but they weren't ones that I necessarily felt the connection to and that I had to keep. Um, I think the story and the characters need to be stronger for that, even if I really enjoy the artwork. So um, my collection is not about a numbers game at all. For me, it has always been uh, stories that I thoroughly enjoy and they're the ones that I keep. Uh, so what really got me started on wanting to do a collections video is that I really want to do an inventory of my manga in order to know what I have, what I'm missing, what I'd like to continue getting. Um, and so I was like, while I'm doing this inventory, I may as well also share what my collection is. And, you know, unfortunately I don't have any sexy uh, library collection shots to show you. I have um, one small shelf that's sort of done in a nice way and I'm probably showing it right now as I talk about it. Um, and that shelf is being redone because I've gotten new works that I would like to display on that shelf more than the ones that are currently on there. And beyond that, I actually keep my manga in little 12 by 12 uh, cubbies. So they're actually in the little um, canvas cubes that go into the cubbies, which in some ways I think is better for my manga than being out on library shelves because it actually blocks a lot of the sunlight from damaging the books. So I do feel like they're better protected in the cubbies that they're in right now. Um, I can just store a lot of manga that way and it keeps it nice and protected. Now, one day, if I had uh, a nicer library room to display them on, for sure I would take you on a library tour. But right now, I will just show what the titles are and you can enjoy them that way. Um, and once this is complete, I will uh, show you my nice inventory that I have completed and how many titles I ended up with because who knows how many they're at. Also, I will say that this is only my collection as of March 2021. I am getting some orders in from um, Right Stuff, so my numbers are going to expand after this. And maybe one day I will um, expand the video. Maybe I'll do it yearly or um, biannually. I'm not really sure. Um, we'll see when I feel like doing this because this video is going to be very long and it's going to take me forever. Um, but uh, this is what it is. So I hope you enjoy my manga collection. So I'm going to start with this shelf just because then I can empty it and I can use it to display the other things. And since I'm going to probably reorder everything anyway, uh, it makes the most sense to clear out all of this stuff first. Um, this is obviously where I keep my Sailor Moon collection or Naoko Takuchi collection. Um, but at this point, it is pretty much just Sailor Moon and Sailor V. <laughs> so um, let's just clear this off and then I can show the actual manga because it's hidden right now behind other things. Uh, this is a plush Luna from Japan. I don't remember exactly which thing it was, if this was from Akuchi, but it's really cute. Yeah, she has a tag, but oh, I can't tell. It was just the, one of the anniversary plushes. 
uh, we just had a plushy crash. These little ones are super cute. Tuxedo Mask and Princess Serenity. I do have uh, Sailor Moon as well. And I believe I have another like Endymion and Serenity set. I just have to show this Luna. Because this is a um, Sanrio collab. So this is the My Melody and Sailor Moon Luna. And she's adorable and I love her so much. This is probably my favorite Luna. Little pass case. <laughs> I have so much stuff on here. A Princess Serenity charm. Most of this stuff was all shown on um, my other channel, so if you want to see any of it, you can check out my other channel. Uh, this is one of the uh, Bandai dolls that was released here in the U.S. in the early 2000s. A lot of people will say 90s. Um, no, that stuff was released in like the very early 2000s. Um, some of it might have been 1999, but uh, the resurgence really happened in like very early, like 99, 2000 time. So a lot of the toys were out then. Um, there was early 1990, not early, mid 1990 stuff from when it first aired in the States, but um, it was mostly the toys. A lot of the stuff that people actually have came out end of like 99 and 2000. That's a whole other thing, but it wasn't until Cartoon Network re-aired it. Um, I lived through it, so I remember buying it then and having it in stores. Um, this was an interesting find of a tarot deck, but this um, I don't think is complete, so I always thought they would do like another part of it. I don't know. It wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. I thought it would be really pretty, but meh. That's a toothbrush. <laughs> and then a lot of the uh, twinkle dollies. I'm just going to knock them off. I have a sitting Sailor Moon figure, which I liked because it was kind of like the updated version of this figure, which is an official Bandai figure, even though it looks like a bootleg. Um, again, that's from a late 90s, early 2000 time period. Um, yeah, she's kind of messy. <laughs> but I did not repaint her or anything because I like that she's so messed up. Um, it adds to the fact that it's old. And they've gotten so much better at figures since then. Well, and having the figure uh, figures optioned. This is actually the uh, first set of Sailor Moon Crystal from Japan, and I got this because it opens and has a music box and a bracelet inside. I did not finish collecting the rest of the series. I just bought the U.S. release. This is just a photo album, and it has, like, stickers and stuff in it. I think this album itself was bootleg. And then I have, like, a classic stickers in there. Th these are really old. Oh, and then my um, Card Captor Sakura postcards. It actually came with the uh, the DVD releases, and then there's Chobits. Um, all of these came with uh, DVDs. Yeah. Occasionally, there was also, I think, some right stuff ones that they used to send. Or it could be... Um, I might have gotten them in one of the anime magazines, like Animerica, back in the day. I didn't even remember that they were all in there, to be honest. <laughs> I should probably take a better look at that. Okay, so on to the manga. Um, I'm going to have to inventory all of these separately so that I know how many volumes I have. Um, I do have the complete sets for all of the Sailor Moon editions, so here we go. Um, This set, which I'm slowly moving into frame, is the one that you will see mention of. This is the mix and then a uh, Tokyo Pop version of Sailor Moon. Um, this is old, y'all. <laughs> uh, this is probably the first manga that I ever bought. Starting with that girl right there. <laughs> and, oh, I just 
I want to see if they have a date on here. Yeah, so the English version of this uh, was 1998 copyright. And uh, yeah, I probably started uh, collecting them right around then. I think I started like shortly after this first volume was released. So like maybe a couple of these were out. Um, but I do have the complete set, volumes 1 through 18. Um, they broke it down. So the original Sailor Moon run went um, 1 through 11, and then they did uh, Sailor Moon Supers, uh, volumes 1 through 4, and then Sailor Moon Stars, volumes 1 through 3. Um, they're all kind of like messy, the, the numbers don't match. Um, I love the original covers, but since I, I do have the art books, um, it's not essential, but I could not get myself to get rid of this. I did update some of my other books, um, so you'll see later, like Cardcaptor Sakura, I did not keep the original Tokyo Pop, um, volumes 1 through 6. I updated them with a later, still Tokyo Pop, um, edition, and now I'm collecting the, um, the good ones, but, uh, yeah. Sailor Moon, I can't get rid of. I still have it. I love it. I'm going to keep it until probably I'm bones and dust and ashes. The next Sailor Moon set that I collected is this one, the Kodansha release that, uh, this was a publication of, I believe, the 10th anniversary of the manga. Um, of course, we got it long after the 10th anniversary. We got it for the 20th. Um, and I was just excited to get a new translation that was supposed to be more accurate. And, you know, it did have the new covers. And it was also condensed. So Sailor Moon for this one runs um, run 1 through 12. And then they did uh, two side story volumes, 1 and 2. And then for the first time, they released um, Sailor V. So, yeah. <laughs> and of course, these had the brand new covers, and I was excited for all of that. I did not love the translation, though, because I thought it was kind of clunky. <laughs> like, just really awkward word choices at times. So, love that they re-released it, loved that it looks so nice on the shelf. Didn't love the translations. to get this. <laughs> this up here is just um, my glasses case, which I do actually have the Sailor Moon glasses and wear them, so you've probably seen me wearing them. And this is the lens cleaner that I don't use because I don't want to damage it. I'm actually not going to do these first, but uh, you'll know they're coming. It's more miscellaneous stuff, like um, Sailor Moon and My Melody. I think this is a notepad. Uh, this was a Serenity calendar, which I did use. This is just a pocket calendar. Um, it's over now. Sailor Moon and My Melody stickers. I gotta do something with these so that they're not stuffed here, because they don't really belong here. And then there was... Um, various like wedding stationery. I don't know. I just thought it was pretty. So I picked up the ones I really liked. <laughs> I have to do something with them. I'm not sure what. Also had um, some Sailor Moon face masks. This was before um, we needed to wear them all. So these are more like just the medical masks. I did wear one once when I had a cold. Um, and then kind of going along, these are the um, Sailor Moon Scout Guides, as uh, as Mix published them back in the day, or um, what became known as Tokyo Pop. 
And so they had one for all of them. There was um, Sailor Moon. This would be the Crystal Guide. Um, Jupiter, Thunder, Mercury, Ice, Venus, Love, Mars, Fire. And uh, these were all based on the anime, so if you get them, if you can find them, <laughs> you get them. It's just like images from the anime. They're just kind of a cute collector's thing. I can't believe how long I've had them, to be honest, but that's fine. <laughs> Over here, <laughs> causing a mess in the back. Over here is what I picked up um, before this became available as a, a an English print publication. This is the Japanese version of our Eternal Edition of Sailor Moon. My first copy is a little um, banged up, it looks like. I don't remember doing that, but I must have. So, much like our copy, um, but I always wanted to own uh, Sailor Moon Japanese print. Um, and way back in the day, I had found a site that was claiming to sell them, and so I ordered them, and I never got them. So I was, I was very sad, because I wanted the original covers, original version, and... Um, yeah, it was supposed to be them, but I never got them. And this was, like, way back, so they didn't have these other publications. At the time, it would have only been the original Tonkuban editions. But I have this lovely copy, and that's fine. <laughs> it is. And, and it also included um, Sailor V at the end. Uh, I will be getting Sailor V for this edition as well. But I have not picked it up yet, because I think it's maybe being published now? <laughs> I have to check. There were so many dates that got moved around um, when the world kind of exploded, so I have to check. But I do own the complete Sailor Moon Eternal Edition, um, volumes 1 through 10. This is the very beautiful, very collectible version that I would recommend to anybody. It's got the nice um, full-color art inside. It has a much better translation. It is massive, but it's beautiful in its massiveness, so I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting this version um, of Sailor Moon. Especially if you do want to read it. Um, if you're just looking to like collect, I don't really care what you get, but if you want a version that you could read, get this one. Also attached there was this cute little notepad that I got way back in the day um, with Chibi Usa on it. Um, I don't love Chibi Usa, she's not my favorite, but I thought that this little notepad was adorable. And I think they were sold out of the Sailor Moon one. The last two are other Japanese publications. So um, I'm trying to remember what the editions were called, but this is like the little, a little pocket one. To be like a pocket bungo. Um, trying to do a size comparison. So this is the original small um, Tokyo Pop one, and this is how small the little pocket bungo is. It's so cute. I love this one. Um, I was contemplating like gathering the whole collection in this size because it's adorable, but I haven't at this point. Uh, and this is actually the first um, novel one of it, so you'll see that it's written out with some art. So, And for ones like that, I think I got them from CD Japan. Essentially, you just look for one of the retailers that sells that way. Um, I've used CD Japan a lot. I like them for uh, Japanese goods. And just to clear them out of the way, I'll do a couple of art books. I do have a larger art book collection that I might at some point cover, um, but these are specifically more um, Sailor Moon related. I kept all the Sailor Moon stuff together. Oh, uh, actually the first thing 
the first thing is actually uh, one of the old comics from <laughs> from Mix uh, or Tokyo Pop. So um, you could go to the comic uh, store back in the day. Uh, this, this is from mine. It cost me three dollars and twenty five cents, even though the U.S. Uh, price for it was two dollars and ninety five cents it must have been harder to find at the time so they could up the price a little um yeah but i i feel like i had more than that this might have just gotten lost in here i don't know either way there you go that's one of the comics the next five books are the uh, chinese publication of Sailor Moon art books. So that's one. And these are soft cover floppy. Two, three, four, and five. Um, next is one of my favorite little art books. I love this so much. This is Strawberry Candle. This is Arena Tenemura's illustrations from uh, Twitter 2014. And she did a whole series in here that is Sailor Moon. She also has some artwork for Attack on Titan. Um, this, I believe, is Utapri. Yeah. Anyway, I love this book. I do have a, a review on it on my other channel if you want to see it, but I love this art, art book. I love Arena Tanamura. Um, you will see her in this video. Next was the art book for um, Sailor Moon, the 20th anniversary art book, or, or 20th anniversary book, I should say. It wasn't an art book. It was just a special anniversary book. It covered a lot of like Sailor Moon merchandise that was coming out and some inter interviews and whatever. It was just a special book. Um, we were actually still waiting for those art book publications. They were supposed to republish the Sailor Moon art books, and that has yet to happen. A um, little bit sad about that as well. This is the Nakoyoshi art book. So this has Sailor Moon in it, but a lot of other shoujo manga as well. I was literally just looking up uh, Saint Tail the other day. I wish that um, Kodansha or one of the other publishers would republish Saint Tail because it was published by Tokyo Pop um, way back in the day and I had started to buy it but then I couldn't ever find I think the last two volumes so um, I ended up deacquisitioning uh, Saint Tail but I wish it would get republished and that I could buy it. It's just a really cute um, shoujo magical girl series but who knows? If not, I will try desperately to buy the the old version again. The next are art books for the R and S movie and um, Super S. I think these are the. I don't know. This might be the Japanese publication, but I thought they were all Chinese. Anyway. These I think I found at my uh, comic store for whatever reason, so I picked them up. And then I think this one I bought online recently, trying to match these two. What was this one? <laughs> This was another special book that was released for the 20th anniversary, but there are um, actual art reprints in there from the art books. There you go. The Sailor Moon Crystal book. <laughs> so there's art in there, there's information about the um, musical. This is the 25th anniversary book. <laughs> I'm like, trying to remember what this one was. If this is the yeah, this is the um, the postcard book that was released. This is a clear file stuck in there. Um, 
It's not with my other clear files, so it's strange. But these were just um, postcard prints. And you could open it up and look at all the fabulous artwork. Oh, there's so much stuff. <laughs> this is why I don't ever touch and redo this shelf, because there's so much packed on it. Um, the next group of stuff is the Japanese publication of the art books. So, there's one. It took me forever to get these as well. Um, I did a lot of investigating, <laughs> and uh, most of these did come from sellers on eBay, but they were Sailor Moon collectors who were, um, you know, downsizing their collections, or they were just, they were done collecting. Um, so there's volume one. Volume 2. There are also ways to tell that these are originals and not um, the bootleg versions. Um, these are all of the originals. Volume 4. Volume 5. And the materials collection. That one, these two right here, five and the materials collection, were um, much harder to get and more expensive. I think volume three was as well, which covers the S arc. And the last ones are just weird, fun English guides. Um, this was the Meet Sailor Moon, based on the new hit TV show. God, I love the 90s. So this was published in 1995, uh, October 95, to go along with the original release of the show, which was geared toward uh, kids. They changed a lot so that it would be more kid-friendly and kid-orientated. So, um, and then these two. Okay, this is the. The Sailor Moon role-playing game and resource book. So if you wanted to role-play Sailor Moon, this would give you all of the information about all of the characters. And you could role-play with your friends. Um, this one is Pojo's World Sailor Moon. Um, they did special guides for the collectible card games. And there was the Sailor Moon collectible card game. So if you wanted to play that card game, this would help you to learn about the cards. And I think sometimes they did... Uh, other like, values and stuff. This also had some of the toys in it. I just saw, which was interesting. There's the uh, original American release toys. These are the ones that you could get uh, earlier in the day, so more of the earlier 90s. The um, Bandai release came more with the uh, re release of Sailor Moon, so again, more around 99 to 2000. So if you see the cuter toys, those are. Uh, newer old toys. They're all old now. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I do see a lot of people kind of like touting almost that these are like, you know, all from the 90s. And a lot of the merchandise was not from the 90s. It was from like early 2000. And that's fine. So my next uh, author that I will go with, my next creator, um, which was right above this, is Arena Tanamura. So let's take a look at my work from Arena Tanamura. Um, I'm not sure where to begin. I'm going to do the um, smaller works first. I can't remember publication uh, years for this, like what her first work was, so I'm just going to go with the smaller works first and then work through the series in the order that I know. So these are three of the uh, shorter works. I won't go into too much detail about what the series are, but Mistress Fortune uh, deals with a girl with psychic powers. Uh, then we had Ion. Uh, this, again, deals with psychic powers. <laughs> I just think I'm like, wait, wasn't Ion about psychic but Anyway. And then uh, Short-Tempered Melancholic, which I adore the title of, and I feel like that describes me most of the time, <laughs> is a series of four um, one-shots. So there's Short-Tempered Melancholic, Rainy Afternoons are for Romantic Heroines, this Love is Nonfiction and The Style of the Second Love. 
Boom. The next series has three volumes. It's Time Stranger Kyoko. I don't remember a ton of Time Stranger Kyoko, to be honest. I should reread some of Arinda Tanamura's work, because it's been a while. But all of her stuff is really nice shoujo, often with a fantasy twist. Um, she has a very unique style with the giant eyes, and I don't know. I love the relationships. Usually there's um, a lot more hidden depth to her work. It's not just the fluffy shoujo. There's usually, like, sad back and side stories. I don't know. It's just... Uh, it's good. If you haven't read Arena Tanamura, try some of her work. Next, um, one of her big series, probably like the breakout series that made her well-known um, in the States, is Kamikaze Kaito Jean. Um, I see a lot of people say this Jean. It's it's not Jean. It's French. It's Jean. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the French version uh, for Joan. Um, because the character is Joan of Arc. So the, if you see that, uh, it's much like if you see the J-E-A-N for a man's name in French being Jean. Um, this is the feminine version, so it's it's Joan. Um, yeah, this is a good series. Uh, it's a magical girl series. She transforms. Lots of stuff happens. <laughs> I can't explain more than that. If you want, read the series. Um, this is the CMX version. Um, I believe this has been republished by one of the other publishers, and now I can't remember which one did it. It's either Viz or Kodansha, but I think it might be Viz. But at the time, they had purchased um, the publication rights for this one, but Viz got like all of her other catalog, so it was just kind of weird to have this be CMX and everything else is Viz. I've contemplated um, rebuying this, and they have beautiful like new covers that are more like dark. I don't know. I haven't done it, but I've been thinking about it. So the next one is probably my favorite series by Irina Tanimura. Uh, again, one of her big series. Mine, unfortunately, is suffering from sun damage because it's too close to the light. Um, <laughs> but it's Full Moon or uh, Full Moon Osagashite or Wo Osagashite. Um, searching for the full moon. Um, I love this one. It's a little bit sad. Uh, our main character, Mitsuki, actually has throat cancer, um, and it's not looking so good for her. Uh, <laughs> and so she ends up meeting... Let's see if there's a picture of both of them. I don't think there is. She ends up meeting the Shinigami, um, who will collect her her soul if um, if she dies. Um, I think even at that time it's described she has the choice, she can get a surgery and probably recover from it, um, but she's worried about getting the surgery because it will damage her voice and she won't be able to sing, and she passionately loves music and singing and wants to become an idol, um, so she has a difficult choice to make. Uh, the Shinigami are you know, she's able to see them because she's approaching death, and they end up making a deal where she takes this special pill thing, and upon the Shinigami's magic, they can transform her into an older version of herself where she does not have ca cancer, and uh, she becomes an idol known as Full Moon. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so you just have to see the decisions that she makes. Um, also, she's hoping that being an idol, she can reach her, um, I mean, she's still a child, she's only like 12, but her, her crush, uh, A.G., who she hasn't seen in a long time, and more is uncovered about that whole story, and it's just amazing, and this is a good one. I would say if you do try an Arena Tenemura work, uh, I would recommend Full Moon, but there's, there's a lot that you can read. The next Arena Tenemura series is Gentleman's Alliance Cross. Uh, just volume one. This is another series. <laughs> There's, uh, again, fantasy elements. Um, I believe this one involves twin brothers. And that's about all I'm going to say about it because I don't remember too much. It's been a while since I read it. I feel bad, like, looking at some of these and I'm like, I need to reread, like, the whole series. I cannot remember details anymore about what happened.
I will say it was enjoyable. Like, I, I might not remember details anymore, but I know that I liked it. Um, and it's the same with this next one. This next one is The Legend of Sakurahime, a big fantasy series. It's, it's in reverse order because it was laying down this way. <laughs> but there are 12 volumes. There's volume one. Again, follows her art style. And this is a fantasy series, and you should just read it if you want to try Arena Tanamura. Look at how many volumes. I Wow, I did not realize, one, that there was this much Arena Tanamura. Like, it was all packed in a pretty small area. So I'm like, <laughs> wow, that's intense. Uh, the last series that I currently have of hers, although I will say I just noticed online that uh, there is a special um, Frozen 2 manga volume that was done by Arena Tanamura. So I'm going to buy that and I will get that soon. Um, but I was mostly checking on this next series, um, which is her latest one and it's called Idle Dreams. Um, and this has been kind of sort of on a hiatus, but maybe not really. I don't know, but it, um, Amazon has a volume seven listed for coming out this summer. So I'm hoping that it is back and we will get volume seven in the summer. Um, this follows Chikage, who, um, I don't know, she's dissatisfied with her life. She hasn't done a lot of the things that she wanted to do and is 31 and without a boyfriend and it just feels like the best days of her life were when she was younger and that she sort of messed things up. Um, she wants to confess to her, um, I don't remember if they were middle school or high school crush, but he ends up being with somebody else and along the way she runs into her, her friend and he gives her a pill and this pill will turn her into a 15-year-old for like five to six hours. And um, she gives it a try so she can relive those younger days. And while she's younger, she is scouted and becomes an idol. So it's sort of this weird story where some of the time she is a 15-year-old and doing idol things, but then some of the time she is the 31-year-old professional that she actually is. And I don't know, I have such mixed feelings about this series because I have no idea where it's going to go. I, I like the, um, the teenage boys that she interacts with, but I don't want her to end up with them. Does that make sense? Like, it just kind of skeeves me out because she is a 31-year-old. Even when she's in the body of a 15-year-old, she's still 31. Um, and, and, and it bothers me, um... There's also a storyline in there dealing with her, her buddy here, Tokita, um, that I was also disturbed and disgusted by, uh, which gave me hints of uh, Scum's Wish, which I do not own. You will not see it on here. I actually did not like <laughs> some of some of that story. I don't know. that I did read the whole thing, um, but it unsettled me in such a deep way that I just, I don't want to talk about it. Um, but there's a storyline for Tokita that uh, just gives me those kind of vibes. Um, but I'm going to read along to the end to see what uh, Arena Tanamura decides for her characters and how they turn out. Um, I will trust in her. But yeah, that's my Arena Tanamura collection. I do have uh, at least one art book as well from Arena Tanamura, which maybe I'll do a special art book video at some point, but... That's Arena Tanamura done. So next we have my You Wanna Say collection. And uh, You Wanna Say is another favorite of mine. Uh, yeah. That's about all I'm gonna say. I have another favorite of mine. <laughs> so I have the Viz Big Edition of Fushigi Yugi. Um, I used to own the individual volumes of Fushigi Yugi. And um, Fushigi Yugi was another one of my early, early pickups for manga. So I used to have the ones that were reversed and were like larger, not as large as this, but they were bigger. And um, then most publishers began to do the flip or original um, version print. So 
the first couple of volumes were like the reversed way and the rest were the other way and I hated it forever and it took up a lot of space so I deacquisitioned all of those and got the Viz Big Edition. <laughs> and so that's what I have now and I think these are really pretty. Um, once again, mine are suffering from light damage, which makes me a little sad. Um, but they're all beautiful. Um, as long as the inside contents are fine, I'm okay with like light damage because I have the art books, um, which are tucked away for the series. So I don't know whether or not I would need to talk about Fushigi Yugi, um, but it tells the tale of best friends Miyaka and Yui, who are um, one of getting sucked into a book universe, so it's an isekai, um, before isekai became everywhere and were mostly like boys harem. <laughs> there were a lot of the reverse harem ones. This is sort of, although I don't know if you can really call it that because Miyaka is honestly interested in one boy in particular, even though the rest sort of like her. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to explain more about Fushigi Yugi. It would take too long, and if you want to know more, uh, go and look it up. Read it yourself. This is a classic series. Um, you want to say has amazing art. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Read this one. Super good. And even though these were published much, much later, I'll just point out, uh, I also own all of Genbu Kaiden. So this is Fushigi Yugi, Genbu Kaiden tells the story of the priestess of Genbu. Um, I'm not going to give away anything more than that. I was going to say something, but I'm not going to, because if you haven't read it, I don't want to spoil it. Um, yeah, I like being in the Fushigi Yugi world. I think they're good stories. Going along with that same thing, I also have Fushigi Yugi Byako Senki, um, which will tell the tale of the priestess of Byako. Um, I think this is currently on hiatus. I am hoping that you picks it back up. Um, yeah, I'd love to learn more of this story, so I'm hoping we do get the full story one day. Next... We have a personal favorite of mine, and that is Imadoki. I just thought this story was so cute. This is much more um, slice of life um, drama shoujo than a lot of the other works that are fantasy based. Um, yeah, I really, I really liked this series. I just noticed that for some reason volume 5 is way over here, even though... There you go, now it's in order. The second big release in America was this one. Ayashi no Sires, or Sere's The Celestial Legend. And, oh man, I loved this one too. Um, this and Fushigi Yugi both have anime um, to go along with them, so you can watch Sere's if you want to. Um, I'm not going to discuss what this one's, but this, this has a big story. And, yeah, just check it out. Check it out. I love this one. There are 14 volumes to this series. And it was good. I liked it. And another fantasy series is Alice 19th. Uh, you will notice too on some of these, let me see if I can bring this up, um, that Yu's name used to be spelled this way, and then Viz realized that it should be spelled this way. So two U's. Um, so you'll notice that some of them look a little, a little different. Uh, Alice 19th, yeah, I really enjoyed this series too. 
I love all of her character design. I like this one. Um, there's kind of a love triangle between two sisters and the one handsome boy. Um, yeah. I kind of want to reread this one. It's been a while. I'd like to reread this. The next You Wanna Say series is Absolute Boyfriend. Oh, there's the Absolute Boyfriend. And this is about a girl who um, is lonely and she orders a love robot online. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, does she officially order it or does the order just go through? I can't remember. But anyway, she ends up with a love robot and there ends up being kind of this love triangle between um, him and the love robot and the main girl here. I would actually love to reread like all of these. I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh, I can't remember the details anymore and I'd love to uh, re-experience it. So maybe I will. And the last one is a series that I picked up the first volume a while ago and then I was waiting until the series was done. It's now complete so I'm going to slowly try to collect all the rest. And it's Arata, the legend. Um, again, by you want to say. This is her only uh, shonen series. So the rest are all under shoujo. Um, yeah. And just in case you are wondering or unaware, uh, you want to say has come out as X gender, but does still prefer in English if you use the gender pronoun she. So until that changes, I. <laughs> I will probably say uh, she or hers. But keeping you in the news of manga ka. <laughs> there you go. I do love you want to say's work. I think uh, it's amazing. The character designs are always so pretty to me, and I usually get very invested in the stories. So highly recommend. The next author I'm going to cover is another favorite of mine. And my volumes are all out of order. <laughs> this one's all out of order, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just going to shove that back in here. But it is Iwasaki Saka. Iwasaki Saka is just it, a favorite of mine. Um, this is Aoharu Ride. Um, all of Iwasaki Saka's works are very emotional, very character and relationship driven. And I love that. I love getting invested in characters. So if you like character driven plot, um, yeah, you'd probably like Yosaki Saka. Um, Aoharu Ride is just an amazing, heartbreaking story that I just love. And yes, there's a love story in there too. Um, but it's just, I love it. It's so good. Oh, and I will say, uh, Aoharu Ride is complete with 13 volumes. Um, this, however, was actually my first um, Iwasaki Saka uh, work series, and it's called Strobe Edge. This was published by Shoujo Beat, I, or Viz Media. Um, I think it's still available, but it might be harder to find. Um, it's been a while since its original publication, which is when I bought it. Um, again, another relationship fiction story. I actually kind of want to reread this one. I just remember really liking it. There was a lot of drama with, I believe she liked a boy that was seeing someone, um, and it was trying to maybe overcome that, but also maybe him seeing that that wasn't a healthy relationship. I think that's what I remember about it. So I'd kind of like to reread this. Um, and you know, some of these authors, you can do that. You can revisit it and it's just as good the second time around. <laughs> I don't mind rereading really well done stories. Um, and the last one The last one was also out of order, but it's the latest series by Iyo Saki Saka, and it's Love Me, Love Me Not, and I have totally fallen in love with this series. Um, we're currently at volume seven. Um, 
yeah, this is the story of a group of friends uh, and dealing with love and relationships. And sometimes the difficulties of that and, you know, very much like other Yosaki Saka works and it's just really good and I just would recommend picking up any of her series um, if you like character-driven relationship stories. You're gonna love her work. My last area on uh, this shelf is the probably the most prolific, like the largest collection that I have, um, and that is my clamp section. And I adore clamp. I think I've read most of their work. Uh, they're they're amazing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think the first two works of theirs that I picked up, um, the first one was definitely Cardcaptor Sakura, and I think the next one was X. But it also may have been Magic Knight Ray Earth. In fact, it might have been Mag Magic Knight Ray Earth. But I know that I just... I bought as much clamp work as I possibly could. Um, anytime I saw it, I just loved their work. Um, and I still do. I still love their work. So I don't I don't know where to begin. There's so much. Um, I'll begin with this, the series I started with. Bam! Card Captor Sakura. Um... Yeah, this is the original part, version one, and then this is the Master of the Cloud. Um, I love Sakura's story. <laughs> it's a magical girl story. Um, Sakura opens this book she finds in her father's library, and the cards scatter everywhere, and she's tasked by the book's guardian to collect all the cards, and that's what she does. Um, Along the way, you see her dealing with her her crush um, and uh, a competitor boy. Uh, where things, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna just ch check out Cardcaptor Sakura. It's good. Um, that's the original setup that I ended up buying. These aren't except for these. These were a rebuy. Um, originally, I had the mixed Tokyo Pop version. Um, which, like I said, I deacquisitioned because I didn't see the point in it. I bought this version. Uh, Master of the Claw was released this way, so these are the original releases. Um, what to do, what to do? We'll do these next because it's Card Captor Sakura. So this is what I've been getting recently, and I, I love these. These are not complete yet, um, but I think we are getting close to the end. This is the Card Captor Sakura Collector's Edition. They are beautiful. They have excellent covers. Again, if I do an, a video on my art books, I have a lot of clamp art books um, since they're one of my favorite collectors. But this version is um, the new Kodansha translation. Um, it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> so if you do want to start with Card Captor Sakura, I would recommend investing in this nice hardbound collector's edition. You're not going to go wrong with it. They're beautiful. They look beautiful on the shelf. Um, yeah. And next would be the current card, Captor Sakura, clear card arc. Um, I think I have up through the current volume, which is eight. I don't know how many volumes there's going to be altogether. I'm thinking they're coming close to the end of this series, but whether it's going to go for like 12 volumes or less, I don't know. But I think they are getting close to the end. Um, again, this is published by Kodansha, uh, and I'm liking it. It's it's so amazing how their artwork had changed, which you'll probably see when it gets to Holic. Like, there's a lot of similarities. You can tell it's still the same art group, but there's quite a bit of differences, especially if you look at something like Cardcaptor Sakura. Um, but they were definitely able to just go back in and just, you know... <laughs> Get Sakura the way she's always been. And I love it. And I'm just gonna bring up another one of my favorite, favorite series, and it's one that is getting a uh, a new anime. Um, I believe this year. I think it's gonna be fall this year. And that is Tokyo Babylon. Um, Subaru Sumanagi is one of my favorite characters of all time. I adore him. Uh, I just, it's just one of those things. I adore him. Um, 
and this story is intense it's emotional and at times sad uh, but it's it's good it's good it's good so Tokyo Babylon I do have the complete series seven volumes love it next we have some of their shorter works so there's the man of many faces it's a two volume series and you will see the main character again in Clamp School Detectives. There he is. He's the man of many faces. And then <laughs> this uh, spins off and leads to Clamp School Defenders, Duclean, is that one. And um, they all tie into really what I would probably be considered Clamp's um, magnum opus, which is X. Uh, back in the day, <laughs> it was originally released under X 1999, but after the uh, millennium happened, it was just shortened to X. So here is X. This is the Viz Media big three-in-one edition. I think these are beautiful. Um, again, I did used to own the other publication, but it was again split um, from when it was released, reversed, um, and then they started printing it the original way. And yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like how it looked on the shelf, so when I saw this edition, I picked it up. I like how when they're side by side, it creates this um, image along the spine. It's beautiful. I love this series. It's so emotional. The The other series are in here. Um, Subaru Returns, he's actually right there. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk much about this, but if you want an epically good series, that's also very depressing. <laughs> In many ways, like in different ways, it's depressing. Um, Check out X. Also, is depressing because it's not complete. Um, yeah, clamp really. We can handle the end now. You can just just let us know how it ends. They take up so much less room than the eighteen volumes individually. <laughs> it saved me a lot of space, which I desperately needed. Next, we have a one-off. It's just the Legend of Chun Hyun. I have no idea if I just said that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. I don't. <laughs> But this is just a, um, yeah, one off. It's all done in one volume. Uh, same for this one, which got a nice uh, hardcover version. Shirohime Shio. Um, yeah, it's just nice. One shot story and a nice a uh, um, hardcover, which was not common. I don't know why that one got released that way, but Tokyo Pop did like a special for it. I don't know if it was released that way in Japan. No idea, but we got that version. Um, next, I actually have two copies of this because it's one of my favorite stories from Clamp as well. Uh, this is Clover. This is the original release of it. And I'm keeping this edition because I love that it had these um, slip covers. They were printed with the full color art in them. Um, mine's a little damaged. I did, I did love this to pieces, but this is probably one of the best um, products I'll say that Tokyo Pop ever put out. Um, I think I, I think they did a good job with the translation of this one, and they did a good job with the release. Like it just looked nice. Um, mine has suffered some wear and tear over the years. I've had it for a long, long time, ever since it was first published by um, Tokyo Pop. So. You know, it's, it's doing pretty good for how old it is. But recently, I just picked up Clover, the collector's edition. This is a giant hardcover. It's beautiful. I re I, um, I reread it recently. Um, and that's why I can say that I think Tokyo Pop even did a good job with the translation, because they have very similar translations. This one is by Kodansha. Um, it's gorgeous. I love it. Good job, Kodansha. If, they keep putting out, you know, the re-releases like this, I will keep investing in them. And that actually ties into 
the next series that I'm going to pull up because I I'll probably keep these but I know that I am actually rebuying it um, and that is Magic Knight Ray Earth that's volume 1 and volume 2 um, I have actually already repurchased it so I had the original release um, they were like a larger volume I, I almost wish I could show it off but there was a six volume series um, and they were nice I liked it but uh, so I have recently um, repurchased Magic Knight Ray Earth. I'm buying the, the hardcover edition that has an art book with it as well. There's like bonus material. Anyway, I just bought that collection. I'll probably still keep these, um, but you know, the big clamp series, I would like to have those collector volumes of. I just think they're really nice to have. Um, uh, and also, no, I'll talk about it in a minute. <laughs> I'll talk about it in a minute because I'll pull up that series. So another one of my favorites. I feel like I'm going to say that about all of Clamp's works because they are literally like all my favorites. But um, here's another one that I adore and that's Chobits. So this is the Tokyo Pop edition. There was eight volumes. Um, this is what I was going to talk about. I have purchased volume one of the new collector's edition and once I see how that is I will probably buy the other volumes. I think there's three more. Um, but yeah, I love Chobits. I'm not going to talk about all these because it would take like 10 billion years, but um, Chobits is worth a read. Anything really that's getting like these special editions is worth a read. Um, I don't think they can do that with X because I think Viz still has the property rights to it. So the ones that are getting like the Kodansha releases, you know, pick, pick those up, but also X. Um, another one that I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, and then once I started reading it, I adored it, um, is Kobato. And I was just, uh, yeah, Kadokawa. So this was a release by Yen Press. I, it's funny because I never really pay attention to, like, who, who was putting it out. I just, <laughs> I'm like, oh, clamp, buy it. Um, so I, I don't know, I fell in love with... Kobato and trying to figure out what was going to happen in the story and Clamp, you just always do a good job. You just always do a good job. There's too many um, to get through to talk about any of these <laughs> in depth. I have one Japanese volume of Cardcaptor Sakura Clear Card. Um, and that is because this came with a Nendoroid, and I really wanted the Nendoroid, so I bought it special. <laughs> so, there's just one random, random volume hanging out. Um, next is one of the series that remains incomplete, and that is Gate 7. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with this series. I don't know if they've given up on it completely or if they'll ever return to it. Sometimes they do. Like, they'll put stuff aside and then one day they'll just return to it. So, we'll see. Um, I was kind of enjoying this. It's a fantasy series. Um, I don't remember too much. Like, I'd have to do a reread. It's been a while. Kind of going along with that is Legal Drug. Um, Legal Drug also went into kind of a hiatus and came back with... Uh, Drug and Drop. And I've picked up Drug and Drop Volume 1. I don't have it yet, but I've ordered it. Um, I cannot find Volume 2, so <laughs> maybe one day I will discover Volume 2 and add it. And I don't know if those two volumes complete the series or if that if it went back into hiatus status, but I don't know. We'll find out. Um, the next one is a short series that I I actually quite enjoyed too, and this one ties into um, legal drug, but it was ski. Um, yeah, it's a little, a little like story as it says here, and it's just, I don't know. I thought it was soft and cute, and this, I can't remember which one of the artists led that, but you'll notice that um, ski and uh, legal drug have slightly different art styles, but it's because the other um, main illustrator was the lead on that story. Next is a fun and cute story, Angelic Layer. I do have the full series for this. 
Um, what was cute about Angelic Layer, much like a lot of Clamp's works, they all like kind of interconnect, but the um, the battle robot that she has is based on Hikaru from Magic Knight Ray Earth. So it's just, it's super cute. Again, that was Tokyo Pop. Tokyo Pop did a lot of Clamp's publishing um, way back in the day, you know, until they folded. Well, they didn't really completely fold, but just look up the whole story of Tokyo Pop. I, I don't have time to talk about it. And they're making kind of a resurgence now, so. Next, another, like, one, one-off one manga, and that's Miyuki-chan in Wonderland by Clamp. Um, what's really fun, really, really fun, is check out the uh, Clamp in Wonderland videos. There's two. Um, but you'll get to see a lot of these characters, and it's just that those videos are fun. Also, you know, if you can find any of these, find them and read them, because they're super fun. Um, another series that I recently repurchased and I deacquisitioned the um, the old four-volume set is Wish. I really love Wish. It's the story of an angel. Well, an angel, and there's also some demons that appear. I'd like to see how they handled the gendering in this one, um, because... Japanese gendering is kind of like non-existent, and the angels are kind of depicted as non as, as genderless. So it's it's just interesting um, when we try to translate a series like this to English because everything is so gendered. Um, so I'd like to check this out. I haven't read this version yet. I don't know if it's an updated translation or not even. So I don't know. I can't I can't remember. I think Tokyo Pop did the first one, so I'm guessing it's a new translation. But there's art inside too when the volumes change, so it's kind of nice. I'm too worried about the spine breaking though. It's a little... I don't know. Okay. There's so many. Um, the next is the publication Tokyo Pop version of Rigvada. And I believe Rigvada has gotten a new translation too. Um, these actually had cool slip covers that came from the store that I got it from back in the day, um, Just Manga, which I don't think they exist anymore. Um, let me just look them up. I was trying to find um, them or a store like them. Anyway, I don't think they exist anymore. But, um, but yeah, they were a nice store back in the day that specialized in manga. And they also sold like art books and stuff. And man, I miss that store. I, I'm going to do like a deep dive to find out what happened and if they like rebranded at all or if they're just gone. Um, most of my stuff I buy from Right Stuff and I love Right Stuff, but I remember like some of the volumes Right Stuff didn't have, I think for Rigvada, and I was able to pick them up, all of them, at like a, a good price at just manga. Um, but usually I would just end up shopping at Right Stuff because Right Stuff nine out of ten times has the best price for everything um, and has them in stock. Uh, so anyway, another clamp series, Rigvada. I do wish that um, these kind of um, slipcovers would be made like readily available because they do help um, for light protection. I mean otherwise I'll just be like shopping at a library supply store and actually putting my layer covers on my on my books. I am like very close to doing that to avoid damage. Um, all right, here's the two big ones, which I don't know if I can show the whole series. This is a, another one where I have thought about repurchasing. But I'm not happy with the binding, so that's why I haven't. If they did a really nice um, like hardcover edition, then I would think about it a lot more. But I think also when you have a series this big... You're not up for buying it like five billion times. So here's the 19 volume series for Holic. Um, 
I, I know there was always debate about how you say this, um, but it's holic. The XXX means that it's anything holic, so it's just holic. Um, this, <laughs> this is a good series, uh, but you can see this was the style art that they were using at the time. Um, it's also seen on Suvasa, uh, Reservoir Chronicle. Um, it was just a bit looser and flowy, and actually I think they had it also for Kobato and Chobits. Um, whereas they had um, kind of harder lines, I guess, with their older art style. But this is beautiful. The inking, especially for Holic, is often like just gorgeous. I don't know if this page is the best representation, but the artwork on the front is. Um, there's not much I can really say about this other than I, I love this series so much. Um, and it expanded into Holic Ray. I only have volume one right now, but I do plan on getting the other, I think there's three other volumes that were released. Um, and also I, I feel like this was also put on hiatus, that the four volumes doesn't complete it, that it's just, it's on indefinite hiatus. I could be wrong, but I believe that's the case. Since I don't have the other volumes, I cannot uh, verify that at this time. But I'm pretty sure that it's on hiatus. This is the one volume um, special little novel. I think they were, I think they're short stories in here. Yeah, um, the one I love. So it's just a bunch of cute little love stories. The current last one for Clamp until I buy my new stuff. This is a giant 28 volume series. Again, I thought about repurchasing both Holic and Tsubasa. Um, with the three-in-ones, but I just don't, I don't trust that binding as much. Um, I think that it would have to be a much nicer versioning, either like the Vizbig edition or the hardcover versions, like what we're getting for Clover and, um, Magic Knight Ray Earth and things like that. I think it would have to be done in that styling in order for me to repurchase. Other than that, I think I'm going to leave it as is. Um, so this is Subasa Reservoir Chronicle. Um, this will bring in, in different ways, all of the favorite characters from every other Clamp work. So I loved that as a Clamp fan, I had already read all of those other works by the time that Tsubasa came out. So I could see the characters in this and identify them and know who they were and be really excited to see Kamui and Subaru as vampire twins. <laughs> It's not really a huge spoiler because you go to different worlds, so like there's different versions of everybody. Um, and the main characters in this itself are Sakura and Shouran, who you meet in Cardcaptor Sakura. Um, and it's 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 brilliant, and it ties in with Holic, so the two storylines um, intermingle. Uh, I don't remember when that starts happening in the series, but it'll happen. Uh, and it's good. It's super good, especially if you're a big uh, Clamp fan like I am. And uh, Subasa got a second little series too, which was Subasa World Chronicle. I don't own that one yet, but I did order that one. Um, and so I don't know when it's coming, but it'll be coming soon. Again, I think that one is also on hiatus. Um, I don't think it was completed in those volumes. I think it's just on indefinite hiatus until Clamp decides to work on it again, should they decide to. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for this shelf, not for my manga collection. So continuing on, here are my Natsuki Takia uh, manga. I have the series Phantom Dream. I believe that this was her first series. It was published after Fruits Basket began um, here in the States. But uh, there are five volumes. Uh, the artwork... I'm trying to think. That, yeah, that's closer to the style. It was kind of interesting seeing her artwork develop over time. And this is quite different from even the original Fruits Basket artwork. That's her first series. And then there was the series Subasa, Those with Wings. And here it was released in a three volume series, but these are double volumes, so it was originally like six, I think. Maybe seven. 
and even though the covers have an updated artwork, the original art was getting closer to um, the artwork we originally see in Fruits Basket. The third is a short story volume, Songs to Make You Smile. Um, this is just a cute collection of romance stories. And um, some quite different artwork in some of the stories. So let me see if I can find a good illustration. So the artwork here in this story, quite different from um, how her art developed over time. So next I have uh, Fruits Basket, and this is the original release uh, in the U.S. of Fruits Basket by Tokyo Pop. This is all 23 volumes. I actually have the banquet book in the background. That's not one of them. I also have the cat fan book as well. Um, but that's not one of the manga volumes. But I do have all 23 original release. I bought this as it was being published. Absolutely love the story. Um... Yeah, this is a classic now, <laughs> and uh, it's currently being done as an anime of the last season. It's going to be airing soon, if not when this video comes up, so go ahead and watch it. Um, pick up the manga. You probably won't find this version, but you'll find the next version. So again, one of the only series that I have uh, double editions of. <laughs> I'm saying that, but now I'm getting like more and more double editions if a nice one comes out. This is the Yen Press edition of Fruits Basket. It's beautiful. These are uh, pretty much... I'm going to lay that down so it doesn't fall. Pretty much uh, two-in-one volumes. It might be closer to like one and a half or one and three quarters. I don't know because uh, there's 23 volumes, but 12 of these. So, do the math and figure out how they got that all in there, because these are all about the same size. Uh, they're beautiful, beautiful covers. I love that you can actually see the stylistic changes from this first volume. into the last. Like, you, you can tell it's the same artist, um, but definitely, like, her style just became... It almost looks more fluid to me. It's not as um, sharp and harsh lines. Uh, but yeah, this is the big series where her style changed and developed. She did have some hand issues during this, which might have affected her style a little bit, but I think most artists change and develop their own style over time, so I, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, I love this series. Just, just go look it up. I don't have time to talk about it. <laughs> but it's great. Um, I love all of Takia's work. You probably have noticed by now that I am into getting the catalog of the artists that I like. <laughs> so that's what I've done here. And for most of my collection, that's what it is. They're usually, um, artists that I've enjoyed more than one of their work. I just, I get invested and I like what they create. I like the creator's creation. It's great. That is not the end of Natsuki Takia's work, by the way. <laughs> but I wanted to state that. Just sticking on that same theme, uh, I do have the complete Fruits Basket Another, volumes one through three. Um, this is just a sweet little story uh, involving the kids of the main characters of Fruits Basket. Um, except for she's not one of the Somas, but you will see all of the Somas. I actually really like this. I wish it was developed a little bit more. Um, you know, we didn't need the magical element that existed in the original Fruits Basket, but just getting to see, like, how the kids were raised and how they're feeling, um, and some of the emotional impact of the original story was really enjoyable here, but I would have liked to see, have seen, um, more of her story and, um, a particular other character. I just would have liked it fleshed out a little bit more, but um, but it was good. It's good. I liked this. It's very simple. Um, you know, good marketing for the new anime, but I liked it as it is. Next is a series I picked up, and I was really excited to see that they released this and that there would be more Natsuki Takia work 
being released in America. Um, this is Twinkle Stars. Uh, this is a big five volume series. I think originally there were 11 volumes. Um, but in the, in the big set, <laughs> we get five. The fifth volume is really large. Um, this is just a sweet, like, more slice of life type, uh, shoujo. And I don't know. I enjoy it. I think, uh, Natsuki Takia really gets to, like, emotional states and I love it. Like, they're always emotional stories that really deal with, um, sometimes abuse that the characters have suffered in the past or just, like, mental anguish that they're going through. And I, I love that. It gets to, like, the human element. And, uh, yeah, this is a story that deals more with that. And I would highly recommend. I enjoyed it very much. And the last Natsuki Takia series that I have, um... It's volumes one through five, and uh, I don't know, I'm going to try my best with the name, it is a lot, and The Witch's Forest. Um, this, like, I don't know if it's Lisa Lot. anyway, uh, this is a fantasy series, again it was getting like high emotional drama, I was really into it, um, but the series is currently on hiatus due to health issues. I... I don't know if it will ever be picked back up, but I really, 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 really hope that it is. Um, I'm sad. I like the series that I enjoy that are on hiatus. <laughs> From Clamp to Natsuki Takia, uh, and you ought to say. Um, I hope that they all get to work on their respective series that are incomplete at some point, but in the meantime, what we have is really good. I, I enjoyed this series. Um, that's, of course, why I want more, but, yeah. And this, of course, has her newer style as the newer work, and I just think she's gotten so much better with art. Her characters are well-defined and beautiful. I love them. So, here's hoping. Here's hoping. Um, of course, for all of the artists, especially if it's a health issue that has made them go on hiatus, I wish them the best, and... I am certainly not here trying to force them to um, do stuff that is not good for their health. <laughs> so take care of yourself, and hopefully one day you can return to the manga. But if not, you're more important. The next creator we're going to be looking at on my collection is Matsuri Hino. Um, so the first series that I have is Meadow Puri. Um yeah, I just remember that this was, uh, kind of fantasy-based, and I believe that he goes from looking really young to, like, more grown-up, and I don't remember much else from that. Uh, <laughs> what's funny, Matsuri Hino, I really enjoyed the artwork for. Like, some of the stories are just okay, but I did enjoy her art. Um, you'll probably recognize the biggest series if you don't already know from the name. Um, the next one I'm going to show is not the biggest work. Um, the next one is Wanted, which I remember being like about pirates. Um, there's a spoiler there for the biggest series. So, yeah, I mean, it was cute. Mm. Again, from Matsuri Hino, we have Captive Hearts, volumes one through five. If I remember correctly about this one, I think that was her servant, <laughs> and she was a rich girl. I could be totally wrong there. Yeah, but I think he was rich. I don't, you know, I don't remember. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since I read it. It was just kind of fun. Again, not one of those reads that you're like... <laughs> it's not gonna be mind-blowing or impact your life at any way. I just liked her art and followed her stories, and I can't get myself to get rid of it because I do enjoy the artwork. So the big series by Matsuri Hino uh, that probably everybody's heard of is Vampire Night. Again, this is not a life-changing series. Well, probably not. I mean, it might be. Um, it's For me, it was kind of a guilty pleasure read. It's about vampires. 
most people have seen it in some way or heard of it. There is an anime for this as well. Um, I believe there's a spin-off manga, which I don't have yet, but I, I, I would consider getting. Um, <laughs> again, I just thought the artwork was pretty. I, I liked it. <laughs> um, you know, on the whole... Uh, love triangle, who will she end up with? Uh, that, that ended in a, an interesting way. Um, if you haven't read it, I'm not going to spoil that, but you might want to. It was a weird, crazy story, but you know what? I still have all 19 volumes. I, I would consider rereading it. I would consider getting the spinoff. It was just kind of a fun, weird time. <laughs> and that wraps up my Matsuri Hino collection. Next up we have a Jose series, Spell of Desire by Tomu Ome, um, who was the creator of Midnight Secretary, um, which I've also read but I don't own. Uh, I enjoyed this one more. It's about a witch. And this is for adults. There are some more mature <laughs> themes and issues in it. Uh, issues? Well, issues isn't the right word. But there are some more mature happenings in it that uh, yeah, you should be an adult for. <laughs> but I like this one. I, the artwork is really pretty. I think she does really intense eyes with those lashes. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was a good read. It's complete at five volumes. It's good. That's it. The next one, which I'm pretty sure is just a, a shoujo, but could borderline Jose, um, is Demon Love Spell, and this is about an incubus. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is complete at six, six volumes. It's just a basic love story one, but it's interesting because the guy is an incubus, so you can see the trials and tribulations that occurs because of that. Next, I have Backstage Prince, Volumes 1 and 2. This is complete by Kanoko Sakurakoji. Um, this is, involves theater, and yeah, that's all I'm going to say about this one. <laughs> so next is Kanoko Sakurakoji's big work, at least here in the States. It is Blackbird. Um, this is what I got first before getting Backstage Prince, but Backstage Prince was published before Blackbird if that makes sense. <laughs> she did that work before this. Um, but this is the big series. Uh, the main character uh, ends up... I don't know how to describe this. Okay, the guy there, he's a uh, Tengu, uh, and I think also her teacher, if I remember correctly. <laughs> anyway, they have an interesting relationship, and it is complete at 18 volumes. This is another one where I really liked her artwork. Oh, I never never realized how similar like all the cards are. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I liked her artwork. I did like this story, so I still have it. So the next in my manga collection is Wolf's Rain. This is a two-volume box set. This was released after the anime, and based on the anime. Which, if you haven't seen, you should check out. Uh, Wolf's Rain is one of those kind of strange series that not too many people know about anymore, but I loved it back in the day, and yes, it's about wolves who in the story look like boys. <laughs> anyway, I liked it. And then we have... Do, 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 do. Trigun. So there's the original Trigun series, done in two volumes, um, but there are uh, four, I believe, all together, and then done in the two-in-one. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so this is the original Trigun, and then there is the 14-volume Trigun Maximum series, all complete. I do like Trigun. Space Cowboys. <laughs> Next we have my Kaori Yuki collection. 
I love um, her gothic art style and a lot of the dark themes that are in Koryuki's work. Um, yeah. So the first one is Godchild. And this is complete at eight volumes. The next, if I remember correctly, is a spinoff of Godchild. Um, this is the Kane Saga. And it's complete at four volumes. Just notice the parental advisory on this one. I don't even remember <laughs> what happened in it that it was that bad. Um, again, this I've had these series for a long time, so um, I would actually like to revisit. Okay, the next one, if you cannot tell, is the massive 20 volume series um, Angel Sanctuary, which some people would take umbrage to. Um, but I thought that this was a really thought-provoking series. Um, the, the big stickler that people got get caught up on is the fact that Setsuna is in love with his sister, Sarah. Um, but there's so much more to the story, and uh, it really deals with reincarnations of angels and the whole battle between de demons and angels, and it's incredible just the work that was put into this series and it's very interesting so if you can get past that um i could uh you know i've i've read other literature where that kind of thing i mean i would i wouldn't be into that personally <laughs> but um i like the way that stories make you think and the psychological implications that occur um if that makes sense. So I, I didn't mind investigating, and I think that this series is very interesting. And um, if you're like me, you're going to be bothered by number three. I don't know why it has that black back box around it. <laughs> I have no idea at all. Um, also, the Viz logos are different down at the bottom. I don't know if I had to buy two and four at a later time when maybe they changed to their new logo. I don't know what happened there, but that's very bizarre because I did like buy these mostly as they were coming out. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened there and I don't know what they were thinking with this. That kind of thing bothers me to no end. <laughs> Just don't do that. Like I hate it too, That which I've had some that I've shown um, where the numbers are like down here. And then suddenly two will be up here. And then back down there. I don't understand that. Like, just keep it uniform. Whatever. Um, that's weird. Uh, I do also have uh, at least one, maybe two, Koryuki art books. So again, if I do a video on my art book collection, um, you'll see what I have for art books. It will not be included in this video, though, which is going to be probably way too long. So next is Fairy Cube, again by Kaoruyuki. This is a complete three volume series. Yeah. Again, I just really enjoy Kaoruyuki's art. I like this, like, I can't even describe it. It's an elegant but kind of gothic feel. <laughs> and I love it. And lastly, there are other works by Koryuki, but I don't currently own them, and um, the two that I'm thinking of were published in hardcover, and she was at least the artist for, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, maybe there was a third, but they're kind of hard to purchase, so um, I don't know whether or not I will be adding them. I would be willing to, though, because again, I love the artwork. Um, this one... I have no idea how to say Gwynol. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the Grand Gwynol. Is it Grand Gwynol? Maybe. Orchestra. Um, this is complete at five volumes. Again, kind of a dark uh, gothic series. That's what she does. <laughs> but I like it. So the next series, which is probably going to be my longest series, but I don't know yet. It might surprise me that I'll buy something longer. Um, but it is Yona of the Dawn. 
by Mizuho Kusanagi. Uh, I love this series. It's a fantasy series, an epic fantasy series. Um, I'm trying to think whether some people would describe it as a reverse harem. I don't really <laughs> consider it that way. Um, but there are a lot of pretty boy characters that surround Yona. But it really is just an epic fantasy series. A lot of adventure, a lot of political intrigue that happens in the beginning. There's the whole romantic angle as well. It's just, it's so well done and I love it. Um, I actually need to catch up on reading it because I think I left off at the halfway point of what I have here. Um, so I need to read like this whole side. But I will. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm actually thinking about picking it up, maybe even as I'm filming this and doing some reading. Uh, I'm really bothered right now by 20, not from the contents of the book, but just looking that this is not published correctly. So we have this huge gap here and the actual spine image is encroaching on the front cover. That irks me. There's no way to control that when you buy these. You know, unless you buy it in person, which none of these were bought in person. They were all bought online um, for a multitude of reasons. But anyway, yes, uh, this is my only work that I have by Mizuho Kusanagi, um, but I love it. So that's it. Um, I don't remember if I'm up to date right now. Um, probably by the time this airs, there'll be another volume out. But I know that there is still another 10 or so volumes just to be caught up to Japan, and they're still ongoing there. So I have no idea how long this series is going to be. But I'll enjoy the journey. It's really, really good. Next is Love and Focus, which is... <laughs> actually, this is out of order. There we go. Um, a three-volume shoujo series by Yoko Noginiri. Um... And she also wrote that Wolf Boy is Mine, which I used to own. Um, then I didn't know how long it was going to be, so I donated it, and then I kind of regretted it because it was a short series, but it was super cute. Um, her series so far have been short, but I love her artwork, and I also think they're really cute. Um, this one dealt with kind of a love triangle between her childhood best friend and the new boy that she met when she moved to this little share house. Um, for school. Again, it's complete in three volumes, but high drama, really cute, love the artwork. Um, I mean, as if you can't tell just by the covers, but yeah, classic shoujo, really good. Um, what was I thinking? There's a new series coming out. And now I can't remember the name of but I will be getting that one too, because it looks kind of cute. Um, yeah. And next we have, probably not going to fit on camera, <laughs> you can just read the bottom, uh, the giant Full Metal Alchemist complete box set. Um, I did not actually buy this as the box set. I bought this um, in the individual manga as it was released. So inside the box set you have all the individual volumes. Um, why I have the box when I did not purchase the box set is because uh, I do acquisitions for the graphic novel collections at my library. So I bought the box set which was cheaper for us to do so we could circulate the books. Um, and this would just be recycled. And I said, I'll take it. And I stored my volumes that I collected um, as the series was being published. And I don't know if this will be in part showing, but um, you can see that the whole Viz like logo for this changed as well. They used to have this little action guy on there, and then they started just doing like the Viz thing. And I don't know if now this would have a different look, but anyway. Um, I loved following the journey of Full Metal Alchemist. I love this book. It's great. Uh, Hiromu Arakawa is another artist that I have um, an art book for. Um, I like her art style. I think she's pretty amazing. Even though this is currently the only um, series that I have by her, I have read uh, Silver Spoon, which is 
more about farm life since she grew up in Hokkaido. Um, really good. Uh, and I want to check out some of the other series that she's at least done the art for. So I may end up getting more of Arakawa's work, but right now I just have Fullmetal Alchemist. Oh, I am also getting the Full Metal Collection. So this will be another series where I have duplicates, but I've uh, heard nothing but good things about the Full Metal Collection, so I'm picking that up. Um, yeah. I want to I want to show that cover. There he is. There's Ed. <laughs> this is a heavy set too. It's chunky. So another ongoing fantasy series with a red-haired heroine <laughs> is Snow White with the Red Hair by Sorata Akiduki. Um, yeah, this is an ongoing current uh, shoujo fantasy series. So this series, I currently have volumes 1 through 10. I have 11 and 12 on order. Hopefully I will get them relatively soon. Um, I'm really enjoying this series. It's more of a soft romantic fantasy series, definitely fairy tale esque, and it definitely has a dedicated and decided love interest. So, this is not one where you are wondering who she's going to end up with and her being with this harem of guys. It is just um, how her relationship develops and the obstacles that stand in the way of them being together. Um, I think it's very sweet. I love it. I love the artwork. It's a nice, gentle read, and it's fantasy, so yeah, I love it. Did somebody mention an ongoing fantasy series with a red-haired heroine? <laughs> I also have The Ancient Magus's Bride, um, another fantasy series where the heroine happens to have red hair. <laughs> this is by uh, Kore Yamazaki. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying this one. I preferred the original uh, storyline, which I don't remember where that ends. I want I keep wanting to say volume six, but I don't know if it was volume six. I think it might have been after. Um, but I enjoyed the original storyline and setup. Right now, they're in the like college years. <laughs> I'll just call it that. And I still like the series, but I kind of miss that original setting up of the world and the darker. Thing, I think things started to pick up again in Volume 12, so I'm not, like, stopping the series or anything. I just really enjoyed these earlier stories a bit more than the later ones. Um, I do not have them all here. I actually have Volume 13 um, <laughs> on my to-be-read shelf. So, yeah, right now I have Volumes 1 through 13. I will keep up to date with this series. I do enjoy it. I like the artwork. Um, I'm interested to see where it's going to go and how it's going to end. Another fantasy series, which I'm probably going to finish getting all the volumes of, but right now I only have a couple of volumes, um, but have read the whole thing, <laughs> is The Demon Prince of Momochi House. Um, this is by Aya Shoto. Um, I have read all of the work by Aya Shoto that have been released in North America, which I think might be all of her work. Um, and the storylines always went weird at the end. Like, I I didn't think any of them had a very good ending. Um, love her artwork, though. Beautiful artwork, beautiful character designs. I mean, I, you can probably tell from just these two covers. Um, but I will say, knowing that this was later, uh, she's definitely developed better as an author. Um, I much enjoyed The Demon Prince of Momochi House, the artwork stayed solid, the story stayed solid. Um, this just completed at volume 16. Um, like I said, I have read it, I just don't own it yet. Um, but yeah, I love work that has... I'm trying to think of what to call it. Oh, I love work that deals with, like, the yokai, and it's the same as when um, they deal with, like, fairy tale literature. So that's part of why I like the Ancient Magus Bride. Um, but also the traditional like Japanese stories with the yokai, I really, really like. So you'll probably see that scattered throughout like all of my collection. And I'm definitely a big fantasy reader. This one 
um, yes, I think if you're going to try Ayashoto, um, go with the Demon Prince of Momochi House. This one was successful, and I liked it all the way through. And I will probably book, pick up the rest of the volumes. That makes 14 other volumes I have to buy, but it's good. So another series which I've talked about at least a little bit before in book openings is Shortcake Cake. Um, this is a series that I was thinking about deacquisitioning once it's done, but now I'm not so sure. I might end up keeping it. Um, I currently have volumes 1 through 11, although I only have 1 through 10 right here. 11 is on my TBR cart. This is by Sue Morishita, which I believe is a group. There's at least two people that make up Sue Morishita. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know. I love the artwork here on the covers. It's sort of like this um, loose watercolor, but almost like crayon like I don't know. Um, it's just different from a lot of the other covers. Um, and artwork. In fact, they'll have a character like that in the story. And he's got these eyes that are just like messed up, but you'll find out more about why he looks like that. Um, I don't know. I'm enjoying this one. It's just a good, um, solid shoujo relationship story. But yeah, I might be keeping Shortcake Cake. I might not be able to get rid of it. And just in case you're wondering from what I just said, yes, there are series that I have purchased and read and donated, which then I kind of regret having done so later. Um, it's usually an okay regret where it's not like so deep that I am in utter turmoil, but I do sort of think, oh, maybe I should have hung on to that. I would like to read it again. But it's not like it's inaccessible to me. I literally can read it again. It's just... <laughs> Sometimes I do like to just pull it up when I feel like it and look at the art and so yeah, it has happened. Um, recently I donated Hatsuharu and Waiting for Spring and they were both good solid series and I don't like have deep regrets about it but you know, I could have seen hanging on to them. Like I do think they're worth it. They're good series. Um, that's part of why I did donate them too though. It's just so that other people can read them because they're both good solid reads that are very enjoyable. Um, not necessarily mind-altering and life-changing, but just good solid reads. So next we have the beloved Princess Jellyfish by Akiko Higashimura. Uh, yeah, I, I love this series. Um, I fell in love with the anime years and years and years ago when it was released. I never thought we would get to see the manga. I couldn't understand why, but I just never thought we would get to see the manga. And then Kodansha came through and they published it and I purchased it like right as it was being published because I couldn't wait to see the ending. Endings, a, a bit of a surprise. I don't know um, if you've read this yet and if you'd agree with me. If you have not, please read it. Um, but I love it. The one thing that I do wish is that I had the box for this series. So if anybody out there has the box that they are not using and want to get rid of, let me know because I would love to put this in the box. Um, <laughs> it's like a simple plea. Um, or I wish that, that companies would start selling the box like separately, where you could just buy the box. I remember um, they actually did that a little bit for the Lord of the Rings series. If you had been like collecting the movies all along, you could actually like come in and I think when you bought the last movie, you had a coupon or something and you could get the box. I just remember because I did it. <laughs> But I wish you could do that kind of thing with manga sometimes, because, like, I bought this right along, but I do wish that I had the box to keep them in. Um, it's just sturdy, and it's nice to put them in. But, yeah, I, I love this series. I can't speak highly enough of it. Um, I do own her other series, Tokyo Tarareba Girls, um, but it's on my Kindle. Um, when I bought it and purchased it, it was not published in book format. Um, because I, again, that's another series I bought right along as it was being published, but it was being published digitally. And then like right after I finished collecting it digitally, they released the first like print volume. <laughs> and I need them to do that for like Chihaya Fia, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, that's good. I like her work. Um, both of the stories are solid and, um, they're Jose. They're, you know, more adult women reads, just the it's more mature. 
Um, yeah, I like it. I recommend it. Next, I have the Giant Paradise Kiss Omnibus. This is the 20th anniversary edition, which just came out fairly recently by Aizawa. Um, I like Paradise Kiss. It's a it's a very realistic story, I think. Um, and yeah, this is another one where I fell in love with the anime. And then, I don't remember, I think that this was published in the US, but it went out of print. Um, so I did not get it then. I think that's the case. Um, if not, I just had to wait till it was published. <laughs> Either way, I own it now. It's a good story. I like it. Deals with fashion and and romance, and it's, it's good. Next is my Bisco Hattori collection, um, starting with Oran High School Host Club, which so many people have probably heard of. I do have the complete 18 volume set. Again, I did not buy this as a box set. I got the box from work, um, because otherwise it would have just been recycled, and I was like, I will take it. So there are all 18 volumes. This also came with a fun little notepad, which is actually at my desk. Um, yeah, I like the series. If you haven't heard of it, go look it up and <laughs> read it. It's very enjoyable. It's fun. There's definite romance, but it's just cute. I, I like, I like Oran High School. Also from Bisco Hattori, I have Millennium Snow. They did do like a re-release of this, but I didn't like the way that it looked, even though I think it was supposed to match. Because um, what happened is these got published, and then I don't remember if there was a hiatus or what happened, but it took a while to get to the end. Um, so you'll notice that the, the last two volumes look slightly different, but I liked the way that this looked individual, 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 rather than like the joint one of this. So. It's a vampire story. Vampire and werewolf. It's just cute. It's only four volumes long. And another Bisco Hattori. Behind the scenes. This one I really did enjoy. Uh, this deals with theater. And I know it's just super fun. This is complete at seven volumes. And... This is a really good follow-up to Oran High School. Next is a more recent manga call that I have come to like, and that is Ichigo Takano. This is the first series, um, which ended up getting published here after, but it's, I believe, the pre-series. <laughs> I say believe, but I'm like 99% sure. Uh, this is Dream and Sun, and it follows our young heroine who goes to live in a shared house and her relationships with the different people in the house and her search for finding her true love. It is complete at 10 volumes and it's it's cute. That's it. <laughs> it's cute and funny. The next series by Ichigo Takano that I'm sure everyone has heard of at this point, but if you haven't, uh, it's orange. Um, Orange brings in a bit of sci-fi elements, but again, it's a shoujo relationship story. Um, I did not mind that it brought in sci-fi elements, and I, I say brought in, but I mean it's right there from the beginning. Um, our main character receives a letter from her future self, um, trying to get her to change what is going to happen, and how all those events play out, so that's Orange. It is technically complete in two volumes, you see here, and these are... Um, leave three in ones. But there is a side story, um, the alternate future story of Orange. So this is called Orange Future, and if you like Orange, you'd probably want to get this as well. I really super, super, super loved Orange, but not everything is for everyone. Um, however, a story I'm actually enjoying more, even than Orange, and I desperately want more volumes, is Become You by Ichigo Takano. And this deals with a boy who gets into the music scene, and it's his relationship with the other boy, I think, that inspires him to get into music. Anyway, I really enjoyed this, and this is, like, it. <laughs> I think, I 
think there's finally a volume two coming out, but it's been a long time since this was released and I'm desperately waiting for volume two. So I need this. There's good relation relationship. Well, yeah, because it's like friendship. If I say relationship, it does not always mean mean in a romantic sense. Um, there's a lot of like relationship drama that I, I enjoy in this, like just seeing how the characters interact and what's going on in the individual's minds and lives, and it's good. Also, just quickly, because otherwise I'm going to forget it, is Junji Ito. Um, this is currently the only Junji Ito that I own. However, I have read the other works by Junji Ito. This is his uh, manga version of Osamu Desai's No Longer Human, and it's very good. I did finish this fairly recently. Um, it does have a few differences from the original novel, so don't read this and try to do a report on Desai's No Longer Human. I would say, like, read them both. Uh, but super good. He has such, like, disturbing artwork, and I love it. I did want to quickly mention that I do have some other manga on my Kindle that's either been, like, digital-only release, um, or I just picked it up for whatever reason. Um, so one is the series I'm in Love and It's the End of the World. I believe the name is Tomo for the creator. Um, and I'm, I'm trying so hard to remember the other works by Tomo, but really cute shoujo stories. I highly recommend them if you see any of the work by Tomo. Check them out. It's really, really good. And as I said earlier, um, that's the one. It's actually right here. It's recommended to me. Um, House of the Sun. I love that series. It's so cute. And there's another one, too, where I just remember the main character is nicknamed Weasel. Oh, but it's so good. It's so cute. Um, definitely check out Tomo's work. There are so many shoujo manga that I just want to buy them all. <laughs> oh my gosh, here it is. Here it is. It's, uh, Amamori Kun's Bride. Yeah, um, all of those stories I would highly recommend. So cute and fluffy and just perfect shoujo for just, like, relaxing and enjoying. Um, yeah. I'm probably going to buy those two series, The House of the Sun and, um, I'm a Mori Kun's Bride because they're, they're super, super cute. I wish that they were published in, like, actual book format because I would definitely buy the book format. Love them. So cute. Read them. It's funny because there's... <laughs> I'm looking at this page <laughs> and like um, all of this work down here, well not all of it, but a lot of it I would recommend. Um, a Condition Called Love is super cute and We Must Never Fall in Love, that's also super cute. Yeah, just <laughs> if you see any of these, <laughs> you'll have a good time if you like shoujo. I'm happy that they're being, like, published, um, here, but I wish that they were actual, like, book versions, because I love the stories, and I love the art, and I want to actually hold it. So again, going back to my fantasy series, where the main character has red hair, this is Dawn of the Arcana, um, by Ray Toma, and, uh, Ray Toma's another one that, it looks like a spot on there, but it, it must be part of the cover. Um, <laughs> is another artist that I just discovered and fell in love with her art style and the work. Um, so Dawn of the Arcana is complete at 13 volumes. There is a new spin-off series, which I have volume one of, and I will try to get over here. Um, I say spin-off series, but it's just where it's set in the same world. So the Ajin that, um, I believe that's the right word. I think it's Ajin. Um, but it, it's that same setting where there's those people. So, like, you'll see they have, like, animal ears. Um, the other one is set in the same world, where those kind of characters exist. Uh, in this series, um, she is kind of forced to marry Caesar. And you have to see how their relationship progresses. Uh, Loki is her attendant and is with her and um, 
Don't get invested in it being a love triangle, if that's what you're thinking. Please don't. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed this story. I liked the twist that it took, um, and I did like seeing their relationship develop and um, how they changed one another. So, yeah. I liked it. And because I liked it, and her artwork, and the style, I bought her next series, which was The Water Dragon's Bride. Um, this one... I waited until the series was all released before I read it, and that was good because I just couldn't stop reading. I, like, devoured it, I think, in a day, or maybe I broke it between two days. Um, this is complete at 11 volumes. It, it's good. This is a good fantasy series. I don't know, would we call her another heroine with red hair? <laughs> uh, it's kind of pinkish. Another fantasy series, great art, great story. I really enjoyed it. And then her latest one, which I was speaking of, is, uh, or of which I was speaking, is The King's Beast. Um, and I haven't read this yet, so I don't know how the story goes, but again, it ties into that same world from Dawn of the Arcana. So I like the looks of this character. I like, like, the wolf or dog ears. I'm intrigued. Okay, so next up we have one that I only have one volume of, Ascendance of a Bookworm. I'll do anything to become a librarian. This is part one, volume one. They are small volumes. This is all that I have. Um, I'm going to check it out and see if I want to collect more, but I'm a little bit nervous too because I don't know how many parts and volumes there's going to be. Uh, but I really liked the anime for this, so I bought volume one of the light novel as well as the manga. And this is the manga version. Next, I'll be pulling up some that I've had for a while. Uh, this is a cute series that I definitely don't see many people ever sharing. Um, Zodiac P.I. I thought this was a really cute mystery series. Uh, this was released by Tokyo Pop, like, so long ago, so long ago. There are four volumes. I actually have this kind of backwards. <laughs> so this is volume four. Um, there we go. <laughs> There's volume one. Um, it was just, it's just really cute. I, I liked it. I had fun with this. Fun mystery series. The next series isn't too, too old, but, um, it has been a while since it was released. And that is Shukokara. Um, or you'll see some people probably say Shuko Chara, but since they say Kara, since it's character, um, I'm going to stick with Kara. Um, this is by Peach Pit. Um, and yeah, this is just a really cute series. I watched the anime so long ago and I thought it was cute and um, then saw that the manga was released in the US, so I picked it up. There are 12 volumes and it's just a magical girl story, essentially. Um, and yeah, I love it. It's cute. It's cute. This is one, like, you can share with younger kids in your life, or you can just enjoy it, because it's just a cute, simple story, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Next we have a long one. <laughs> Kamisama Kiss. I'll see if I can get more of the volumes up here. Yeah, this series is pretty massive at 25 volumes, plus there was a special Kamistravaganza book. <laughs> Just over there that was bundled with um, the limited edition last volume. So that's the one that I have. But yeah, 25 volumes. Again, this checked a lot of my favorite boxes. Uh, there's the yokai ayakashi um, story in the background. Uh, it's a romance fantasy shoujo. So, of course, I had to pick this up. Again, there's uh, an anime for this as well. Uh, at two seasons. I wonder if they'll ever finish the whole story off. I don't remember where the anime left off, actually. But it'd be nice if they completed the whole series. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this one. It's good. <laughs> and quite a lot of volumes. Next, another one that's kind of old now. Princess Tutu. Again, this has an anime. I love the anime. Um, but this is just a quick two-volume manga set that I'm making a mess of. <laughs> the art was done by Mizuo Shinonome, and the story is by 
Ikuko Ito and Junichi Sato. Um, yeah, if you have not seen the anime for this, I would definitely recommend the anime. And then if you like the anime, you could search for this. I don't think that this is still in print. This was actually published by ADV, um, which no longer exists. Um, I think the current company is Sentai Filmworks, but the actual ADV is, like, gone. Um, so... I don't think you can find this. Um, but definitely check out the anime, which is still available. Next is another shoujo release by ADV, um, and that was Pre-Tier. And this is another one that was created by Junichi Sato, um, but the author and illustrator for the manga is Kaori no Ruse. Um, it's only four volumes. Again, this is probably like impossible to find now, um, unless you can get it secondhand, but... I loved Pre-Tier, the anime, and so I looked up the manga and loved it. <laughs> so this is another, you know, shoujo, fantasy, magical girl type story, and yeah. It's a shame some of these. I wish would get, you know, a republishing, but they are lost to time now. Another oldie but goodie, one of my favorites, um, Marmalade Boy. I love this one. It's by Wataru Yoshizumi. Um, yeah, this is still good. Um, this was released by Tokyo Pop way back in the day. I collected it as it was released. I Again, this is another one I wish that a publisher would um, pick up and republish, but you know, with some of these classics, they just don't care. <laughs> but this is so good. Uh, it's a hard one to describe because it's her parents and the main boy, which I don't know if any of the covers feature him. Um, he's sort of at the end. <laughs> it's not really spoilers. That's just it's just them hanging out. Um, but their parents swap spouses, and they all live together in this house, so they're forced to live together. <laughs> And their relationship kind of uh, blooms from there. There are some interesting questions that are brought up. Um, so at times things do get intense. Um, she calls him Marmalade Boy because he seems all sweet, but then he has all these little little bitter bits inside of him. Um, so he's just like Marmalade. And um, he calls her uh, like sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> She's sweet and sour. <laughs> So anyway, this is a cute series. Um, I would love to reread this because it's been a while. But also I wish that more people could buy this and read it and that it wasn't so difficult. But you never know with the older titles. Another Tokyo Pop release that's older and that I absolutely loved. Um, one that I, I collected, you know, as it got published. Could not wait for the next volume to be released. And that is Mars. Um, there are 15 volumes of Mars, and then the release of the special volume, Mars, Horse With No Name. So I was trying to remember what happened in Horse With No Name, but whatever. <laughs> it was like the bonus story volume. I don't know. Mars is by Fuyumi Soryo. There was another series of hers that was released in the States that I was interested in but never picked up, and now I kind of regret that. Um, but I think that it might have been right before the collapse of Tokyo Pop, or it seemed to be to me. <laughs> it could have been like way before the end, and I just was like didn't want to invest the money in it because I didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> so <laughs> you buy what you can. Um, but I was interested in it, so I'm kind of sad I didn't get that one because again, any that was by Tokyo Pop, they're out of print. Unless another publisher picked them up, like what happened with a lot of um, Clamps works. Um, yeah, but this is another great shoujo work, um, more in the drama relationship fiction side of things, but it's so good. The um, main female lead is an artist. They're in high school, but she's an artist, and she ends up asking him to model for her, and then their relationship develops from there. But it's, it's just really good. There's our, our artist lead. So she's the main character. And um, he is the male lead. Slash interest. But really good. Really good. 
And then we have one that's not too old um, and is by Viz, so it may still be available. And that is A Devil and Her Love Song um, by Miyoshi Tomori. Um, I fell in love with this series. I didn't expect to. <laughs> I thought this was going to be one that was kind of a throwaway. But then I fell in love with the characters and the plot. So um, this is one also that I would love to reread. So I'm looking through all these manga and I'm like, I would love to reread and like review it. Because while I remember bits of the story, I don't remember all the details and I would love to. Um, yeah, I was glad that I did not deacquisition this one because I really enjoyed this one and it does have pretty art too. Um, just classic, like shoujo style. Yeah, so excited. <laughs> And that's a 13 volume series. I don't know if I said how many volumes that was. This is editing Mary from the future in and realize that even though I have very vivid memories of shooting my Nagabe books, that they are somehow missing from the video. So I am here filming um, my Nagabe collection, which somehow they were not with my other books, even though I did in inventory them. <laughs> So, um, the Nagabe works that I have are Love on the Other Side, a collection of stories, short stories by Nagabe, The Wise Wise Beasts of the Wizarding Wisdoms by Nagabe, another collection of short stories, and then the long series, which I currently have, through volume 9. 10 will be out shortly. This is The Girl from the Other Side, Shularun, um, which means uh, Go My Love. So, um, yes, I love this series and would highly, highly, highly recommend The Girl from the Other Side. Um, I hope that when the series ends, because it is over with volume 11, that I will do a series review of The Girl from the Other Side. But I will say at this point in time, I absolutely adore this series. I would recommend it to anybody. This is my favorite work by Nagabe, um, but you can pick up Nagabe's other works as well and you won't be disappointed. Nagabe has a very unique art style that I also really enjoy, but yeah, there you go, Nagabe. We are going to be getting into the BL section soon, but before we do, I'll start with an artist that is in BL, but this is not a BL series. Um, I, I don't actually know how to say this. Is it Granoliers? I don't know. But this is a series by Rihito Takurai, um, who is famous in the BL uh, world, but this is her shonen series. And it's where like these seeds can become implanted in people, and some of them develop these powers from it, and they want to stop that from happening. This is currently on hiatus, but I have the three volumes that are currently released. Um... I like the series, and I love Rihito Takarai's art, so, um, yeah, I do hope that this gets picked back up. Uh, also, there is a shoujo series that Rihito Takarai did the artwork for, and I would love that to be published in the States, but I doubt that it will. I liked that series. Um, we'll see. So, more from Rihito Takarai. This is Seven Days, um illustrated by Rihito Takarai, but the story was by Venio Tachibana. Um, it's, this is a really good, um, soft story, great pacing. I love this one. <laughs> Yay! And then, you know, you're, you're gonna have it if you're talking about Rihito Takarai, and, and that's ten count. Uh, again, I love Takarai's art, um, the story gets intense in times, definitely for adults, but, um, such good artwork. <laughs> They're just some artists that I just, I love, I love the artwork. Um, this is complete at six volumes. And, yeah, world, uh, you can release more Rihito Takarai's work in the States. That'd be great. Just going along with that, I did have the Japanese edition of 5 and 6 because they came with bonuses that I wanted, so these were these cute little figures. Um, and 
I don't remember with the final volume. I think there was... Uh, um, maybe a little folder thing? I don't know, but there was something that came with the final volume, too. Also, an accidental purchase. <laughs> Only the flower knows, which, you know, you look at the outside and you're like, oh, that's fine. Um, but this is actually the uh, German language version. I do like this story, and this is one that I would love to be published um, in English so that I could purchase it legally. Next, going for a much softer story, um, is I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Fumino. Um, this is actually one of my favorite series. Um, you have the two characters here, um, which I'm like, oh god, I can't remember their names now. <laughs> he actually suffers from hearing loss, so he is mostly deaf, um, and has trouble hearing the world around him until he meets our main lead over here, who speaks very loudly and he can always distinguish his voice. Um, and it's just how their relationship develops and how um, knowing one another affects them um, and maybe changes the course of their lives. I really liked this one. Um, it is still ongoing, but uh, currently there's the first I Hear the Sunspot and then I Hear the Sunspot Theory of Happiness and then Limit Volume 1 and 2. Um, I think Limit is what the series is still called, so whenever there's a third volume, it'll probably be Limit Volume 3, but um, this one I definitely recommend, and especially, too, if you don't like anything that's too, like, hardcore, this is a soft story, so you're, you're pretty safe. Um, and, yeah, highly recommend. Good read. Very character-driven. The next one has a, a bit more smuttiness, but I still think it's really sweet. This is The World's Greatest First Love, Sakaichi uh, Hatsukoi, by Shungiku Nakamura, who is possibly most famous for her work, uh, Junjo Romantica, that I think is still ongoing. Yeah, I did not invest in that series, because this one is long enough. <laughs> I feel like her series are okay, but um, way too long. Like, just, I don't know, wrap it up. Um, <laughs> I thought that this one was a lot cuter than Junjo Romantica. This one involves uh, these two gentlemen who were high school sweethearts and had a misunderstanding at that time and uh, separated and both left heartbroken and uh, years later they re reunited at the manga company where they, they're in the publishing industry and how things progress from there, and kind of overcoming those thoughts that they had about what happened. Uh, I think it was 10 years ago. And I don't know, I like that. Um, with most of her work, she has semi-issues with consent, but overall I think this one is done in a better way than like Junjo Romantica. But, um, yeah. I currently have 13 volumes of this. I don't know if there's another one out. I do try to stay up to date with it, but, you know, if I get behind a volume, it's not a big big deal. I'll just buy two at once. Also, I don't really count this as manga volumes that I own. Like, it's not being inventoried. But I do have uh, two copies of uh, their manga magazine, Dear Plus. I really like this story here. I don't think this has been published in... English yet, but um, publishers, if you could do that, that'd be great. Um, but the, these contained, I think, some of the last chapters for 10 count. A cute little one volume BL, Our Dining Table. This is by Mita Ori. Um, this is just a really cute story. <laughs> Next, we have a disturbing story that I have mentioned before when I've hauled it, um, but it's Cast Heaven by Chise Ogawa. I love Chise Ogawa's work. Um, it's another one where there is a shoujo series that I wish would get published in English. It's really, really cute about like an older guy who goes back to school to finish his degree. Anyway, it was really cute. Um, but this work is much darker, more explicit, um, and it involves this messed up game that's happening at a high school and just really disturbing relationships. Um, I currently have volumes 1 through 4. I think the fifth one might be out, and I may have on order. If it's not out yet, then I have the pre-order on it, but um, 
I don't know when I'll get it because I might have made a mistake in one of my carts <laughs> with the right stuff. But anyway, this is a intense, messed up story, but also like engaging. And I can't stop trying to see what happens next. Another one that's messed up, and part of me is like, why, <laughs> why out of all of them? Uh, can can I not get over this one? But Yorichin Beach Club um, by Ogoretsu Tanaka, um, who has other work that I actually love much more than this story. <laughs> but this one, I can't help like reading, trying to find out what's going to happen with this stupid love triangle. <laughs> like, that's it. There's a lot of it that I'm like, this is so messed up. But I just want to keep seeing how these three characters develop and what happens in their relationship. So currently I have through volume three. This is another one where I can't remember if, the, if another volume is out and I'm waiting for it. But anyway, crazy. <laughs> and now onto one that's an actual like favorite. Um, and that, which I've also talked about before, is Given. Um, I love Given. I love following this band and other bands. Um, and getting the backstory and just seeing the characters relate to one another. Uh, this is by Natsuki Kizu. I accidentally grabbed a extra volume there. Um, <laughs> So currently I have four volumes. I think this is another one where volume five may be on pre-order or is released and I'm just waiting for it to come in. But yeah, I love the story. I love the artwork. This one's pretty, pretty safe for most readers, uh, teen, teen readers and up. Um, yeah. Also has a good anime adaptation, which I kind of hope they do a season two of, but for now, just good. I like Given. And lastly, another favorite, possibly my favorite BL series, and that is Koi Monogatari Love Stories. Um, I was so happy. I have this backwards. I was so happy when this got published in English. Uh, well done, Tokyo Pop, on your comeback. Um, because this is just such a good story about human relationships and understanding and also overcoming biases and I just, I love this so much. This one I, I just want to recommend for like everyone to read, even just for that basic level of human understanding that it offers. This is a good one. <laughs> and um, yeah, I can't wait to see what happens with relationships and feelings and whatever, because there's no, no set anything at this point um, in the manga. And I don't mean what is published here in the States. I'm talking about the Japanese version. So I'm going to keep collecting, and I'm going to keep following this story, and I'm going to see what happens at the end, but this one definitely gives you feelings. In case I didn't say it, this is Toru Tagura for the art and story. I also do have one BL that is on my Kindle, and that is, I believe it's called Blue Morning. Let me see if I can just pull up the basic data. I also can't remember if I mentioned... Aobukun's Confessions, but I do have all eight volumes of Aobukun's Confessions on my Kindle. I um, actually did a review on that series. It is not a favorite of mine. Um, I'm kind of stuck with it because I have the digital copy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm not sure that I would um, recommend that title. <laughs> the other ones I own um, I'm in love and it's the end of the world. Absolutely love that one. Um, Tokyo Tarare by Girls. Um, love that one. But, um, Aobakun's Confessions. Um, yes, Blue Morning. And I have seven volumes of that. I can't remember if the seventh is the final volume, but I remember that I bought the digital copy. I think because at the time it was farther along than the print version, but now I think you can get the full print version too. Um, and it was just an interesting, like, master-servant kind of story. <laughs> I, I need to read it. I have not finished it. Um, but I remember it was getting close to the end. 
and yeah, I need to finish reading it. So here's the nice little spreadsheet that I created for my manga collection so that I can keep better track of it. Um, you can see that I have li listed uh, title, author, the number of volumes, and then the number of volumes that I currently own, and then the series status, and then any notes I have on the series, such as the 3-in-1 edition, or um, the sometimes the publisher, if they, I have multiple editions of the same series. Um, but this is how I have it all laid out. And it can be easily added to, and then once again, easily sorted. Um, right now I have it sorted um, alphabetically by author. And that was also my easy way to see how many volumes I currently own. So as of the end of March, I had 854 volumes. That's crazy to think. I've seen larger collections, but that is my collection after weeding out several... Uh, <laughs> several volumes of manga and different ones that I did not want to keep. Um, on top of that, I know that in April my number of volumes is going to grow. I will be getting more stuff in, but I did think this was the perfect time to do a quick inventory before I do get more stuff. Um, this has been really cool for me to see. I like getting it all laid out on a spreadsheet. Maybe someday I'll do that with my books as well. But, um, yeah, there's my manga all organized. So thank you for watching my manga collection. You can see that I have a lot of titles and that the majority of them are shoujo. Um, that's not to say that I don't like shonen titles and don't read shonen. A lot of times with shonen, um, they're longer series. So I do tend to borrow shonen from the library rather than owning them myself. Um, and if I'm being honest, I do tend to like shoujo stories a little bit better. There's more of that relationship drama that I actually really enjoy in my books. Um, I don't know. My collection makes me smile. I know that I can pick up any of those series and enjoy rereading them at any time. Um, and also just looking at the artwork. I was surprised at the number of manga titles that I have. Um, but also... It's kind of scary to think like how many that number would be if I had not deacquisitioned certain titles. Um, yeah, I, I can say right off the bat, I have read thousands of manga, thousands. <laughs> and um, I don't think I'm going to stop. I, I like it as a genre. And like I said before, it's been uh, over 20 years now of my life <laughs> that I've been reading it. And the stories are just good. If for me, it's just like reading any other novel. And I certainly love reading novels. So um, I can see continuing to read these stories and recommending them to anybody else. Um, if you have enjoyed watching this and you have um, any suggestions for me or you have any questions that you want me to answer or you want me to make any suggestions for you, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, I will look toward answering any questions. Um, if anything comes up that I really want to get more in depth into, I'd even make a video on it. But um, yeah, I love feedback. I love hearing from other people and other fans. Uh, so share with me if you have any thoughts. I'd love to hear it. Um, thank you for joining me on this collection journey. And that's it for this video. Until next time. Bye.